Tonight we'll have a reading from this coming Sunday's Gospel as a preview uh, for what we will hear this coming Sunday. So the Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. But whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for praise and worship, seraphic praise and worship and for joining us in this short time of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. These readings that we have heard for the last couple Sundays and for the next couple Sundays will all be from John's chapter 6, which is all around Jesus' story about the bread of life, saying from the beginning, I am the bread of life. Uh, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And so I'd like to just reflect just for a moment of what does that look like for us tonight, and especially uh, in light of where we are in our world, in our church today, uh, the prayer that we pray tonight is really a prayer asking the heart of Jesus in the Eucharist to really have mercy on us and on our church and certainly on our world with all of its division and all of its challenges and above all the crisis that we have experienced, you know, among our own clergy. But first, just a, the context of this wonderful gift of the body and blood of Christ. It was on Independence Day in 1858 that Abraham Lincoln, who was not yet the President of the United States, said these words to all the Americans. He said, Every American have a claim to our nation's freedom, for we are blood of the blood and flesh of the flesh of those who wrote the Declaration of Independence. Blood of the blood, flesh of the flesh. Parents, you all know that you refer to your children as our own flesh and blood. And when God created Eve in the garden, in the book of Genesis, it says, and they presented Eve to Adam, Adam burst out with these words, at last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And to express this reality of the incarnation, the mystery of God becoming one of us, we have in these words in the first book of the Gospel of John, and the Word became flesh. 
And so this gospel that we just heard today invites us to share in the very life of God. For Jesus says, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And in this Eucharist, this, this very simple, beautiful gift that Jesus gives us under the forms of bread and wine is really the gift that satisfies all of our hungers. And we receive the spiritual nourishment above all when we share in God's eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And brothers and sisters, as we come together tonight, we remember again the powerful gift of God's eternal forget-me-not. This is the gift He gives us in this Eucharist that reminds us again that God has not forgotten His people that he is always here, and that the first and foremost thing is even though sometimes we move away from God because of our own selfishness of sin, Jesus continues to remain with us forever in these humble signs of bread and wine. And we recognize that this is no longer bread and it's no longer wine. For Christ, we know through the gift of transubstantiation at the consecration of Mass, becomes present bodily but not physically. It's a spiritual body and not a physical body under the form of bread. And it is the risen Lord who is present in the Eucharist. And it can be misleading to portray that Christ in the Eucharist is this infant at baptism or the victim of Calvary. In fact, the Church who is truly and bodily present in the Holy, in Holy Communion, we believe is the risen Christ. My brothers and sisters, as we come to adore the Lord in this beautiful sacrament, we know that He is physically present in body, blood, soul, and divinity among us. And this gift of his presence continues to satisfy the deepest hungers of our hearts. And all of us have hungers in our hearts. We have the hunger just to be loved and to be accepted. We have the hunger to know that we're cared for and wanted. We have the hunger also to also be a self-gift, that the whole gift of, and the reason why God gave us breath is that somehow we might in turn become this gift to another. Tonight, as we come to venerate and give glory and honor to Christ under the form of the Blessed Sacrament, we ask that the Lord will continue to strengthen us in our weaknesses and in our sin, but we also continue to ask Him to satisfy any of our hungers, those areas in our lives that still need fulfillment and satisfying. And we also come tonight to pray for our church, pray for one another, pray for our clergy, and religious, for our shepherds, and above all, for the Holy Father. So now as we uh, have some time for praise and adoration and, and song, uh, some of us as priests will be uh, hearing confessions as well. Uh, I'll be back in the uh, confessional, and some of the other folks will be over by the statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh,